Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the new Open HPI course on Business Process Modeling and Analysis. My name is Matthias Weske and I'm the Chair of the Business Process Technology Research Group at the Hasso Plattner Institute at the University of Potsdam. In this um, video, I like to explain to you the content of this new Open HPI course, so that you will be able to decide whether you like to take the course or whether you do not like to take the course. This course is about business processes, and if you think about it, we are all involved in a number of business processes. That can be either as clients when we trigger business processes or as professionals when we are involved in the execution of business processes in our professional life. For instance, when we submit an insurance claim to our insurance company, maybe after um, our bike has been stolen, we trigger a business process at the site of the insurance company. This also holds when we apply for a permit to build a house, we trigger, we start a business processes at our public administration. And when we apply for a credit to finance property, we also create, start a new process um, in our financial institution. At the other side now, as professionals, we participate in business processes. For instance, when we work for an, an insurance company, we uh, need to check whether the theft of a bike is actually covered by the insurance contract of the applicant. When we work for a public administration, we need to check if the local requirements for building the house are actually met. And if we work for a financial institution, we might want to check, we might have to check, um, or might to assess the risk of um, granting a credit. So companies and public administrations provide services and products to their clients by enacting business processes. So it's safe to say that business processes are at the core of organizations and are therefore a very important success factor for organization. As these examples also a little bit indicated that people are the key to business processes. People are very important. And to dive a little bit into this topic, um, the next slide shows you a number of roles that are involved in process management projects. First of all, we have the process participant. And this is the domain expert who does the actual work, who is the expert in insurance and public administration or in finance, the, the persons who really um, do the checks uh, that I've been talking about in the previous um, slide. We also have the process owners. These are also domain experts, but they have a management position. They might be the um, chair of a department, and they also often have, to have a business background. Many process management projects um, have uh, business process management consultants. These are process experts, which might have a business background or which also can have an IT background. When it comes to implementation of business processes in an IT architecture, software architects and developers play a um, very important uh, role, and these are obviously IT experts and often computer scientists. So all these different roles, all the different people who um, are in these roles are involved in process management projects and they need to cooperate, they need to work uh, together to um, implement um, good business processes. But these people use different technical terminology. They have different backgrounds, so they are likely to use a very different technical terminology. We can say they speak different languages and therefore we sometimes see in these processes some degree of uh, misunderstanding. When several people need to work together, um, there is a strong need for a common language. And this slide tries to motivate what this uh, common language can be. So this uh, um, slide also shows that there are four um, key activities that are important in most business uh, process management projects. The first of which is process documentation. So the question here is what are the main business processes um, in the organization um, and how can I describe them? Due to the lack of this common language between all these uh, people, uh, often just plain text is used to describe these processes, or Excel sheet, uh, sheets are used to describe the steps in the process. Or sometimes we see figures that are drawn by um, 
for instance, in some presentation program. Um, however, these figures do not have a precise semantics. It's, they only have a meaning for the person who actually um, designed these figures. Once the processes are documented, a strong, there's a strong need for process improvement in many cases, so we like to improve things. Um, and also here we see that the, the domain experts are uh, involved here, um, but also um, the BPM the consultants might be involved, but also the IT department might be involved. The IT department is crucially involved when it comes to process automation, when it comes to taking the improved process and implementing this in the IT architecture. And once this process is implemented and once the process uh, runs, it needs to be uh, monitored. And um, in, during the monitoring, you like to really see um, how good does the process, is the process implemented, are there certain things that are not, um, not so good, and so forth. We also like to see whether the process implementation um, actually fulfills um, the requirements that have been um, that have been defined for it. All right, so these are the main activities. Now the question is what is the, what is the common language for the people to work on these activities? And in my view, this is business process models. So these business process models are really at the core of these, or the center of these figure, because using business process models, you can do process documentation, you can discuss ways to improve the business process with your uh, partners, also from different roles. You can discuss with the IT department which parts of the process might be implemented um, in a certain IT system, or which parts needs to be implemented manually, for instance. And also you can discuss process monitoring, so what are, uh, what, um, are the activities you need to measure, what are the really decisive points you want to take care um, during process runtime. Okay, and this is why business process models are also at the core of this course. Now it's time that I show you the first business process model, and it is <coughs> the model that, um, that fits quite well the initial example that I showed you in one of the earlier slides. So we have the client here, and we have the insurance company here, and um, we see that the client issues um, an insurance claim, submits an insurance claim, sends this claim to the insurance company. You see it here, that is represented by, um, by an event. So we will look into the detail and the notation and also in the conceptual meaning of these elements, of course, in detail um, in the course. But then you see a number of activities to register claim, to decide on the claim coverage. There is a decision, either there is an approval or there is a rejection. And afterwards, there are events that send either an improvement um, or a letter of rejection. So this figure, this diagram has um, a meaning and this meaning is agreed upon um, by all of these different roles. So there's, there's uh, let's say, less chances of misunderstanding of the different roles um, regarding this business process. Business process can be much more complex than the one I've shown you before, of course. Uh, slightly more complex processes can be used for documentation, improvement, automation, and monitoring. So here you have different um, roles, different, let's say, domain-specific roles, or sales, warehouse management, and logistics in an order process. And you can, of course, look here at uh, decisions, um, exceptions, at the handover of work, and um, much more things that you could not discuss in the previous model that we've seen. All right, it comes to the intended audience. So um, this course invites persons interested in a deep understanding of business process modeling concepts and languages, in particular, the business process model and notation. We invite people with different backgrounds to participate, including domain experts, business administration experts, and also IT professionals or computer scientists. The goal of this course is to improve <coughs> the understanding and communication in business process management projects. I'd like to briefly talk about <coughs> the organization of this course. So, in general, open HBI courses do not have prerequisites. Everyone um, can join. The participation in the course is free of charge. The course consists of six weeks of lectures and one exam week. In each lecture week, we cover one topic. 
um, a set of lecture video clips are provided at the beginning of the week and you can use uh, self-tests during the week to um, check your learning progress. You are also asked to do a homework assignment each week and you can use the forum to discuss topics with your fellow students. During the seventh week you can take the, the final exam. To give you even a bit more idea of the organization of the content organization of this course, um, this slide shows, shows you the course outline. So in the first um, week we look at fundamental definitions in business process modeling and analysis. Um, we also look at the business process life cycle and take a quite high level view on business processes by looking at process landscapes. In the second week we investigate basics on uh, business process modeling using the business process model and notation BPMN. Um, here we introduce activities, gateways and events, but we also look at modeling guidelines and best practices, so we discuss how activities and events should be labeled, for instance. In the third week, we analyze business process uh, behavior. Um, this is a formal topic, but um, I like to introduce this topic in a quite an informal way. So we um, provide an informal introduction of process behavior and uh, correctness criteria regarding the behavior of business processes, in particular soundness. In the fourth week, we cover um, several aspects of the BPMN that we didn't cover in the, in the second week, and that includes uh, sub-process, multiple instances, activities, as well as pools and lanes. So after uh, week four, we have a fairly uh, good understanding of the um, business process diagrams that are um, specified in the BPMN. The fifth week looks at data in business processes, so process models do not only cover uh, processes and activities but also data and that's very important because all business processes um, basically work on data, create data objects, um, make changes to data objects, therefore it's essential to also look at data in business processes. And in the um, fifth week, we look at representation of data objects in business processes and um, also we look at data stores and we cover consistency between the data and the processes. In the sixth week, we cover a uh, topic which is well discussed in the, in the uh, academic literature and also in academics as a whole, but that is not so well investigated in, um, in the industry, and that is business process choreography. So here uh, the question is how do different business processes that, are, um, that run in different organizations interact with each other? And when we look at the initial examples that we had where I talked about the insurance uh, company that receives a message with an insurance claim and afterwards sends an acceptance or a rejection, you have these type of interactions between different processes already. And I think that business process choreographies will become much more important also uh, in practice in, in the future and therefore I'd like to discuss this in week six. Week seven is the week of the final examination. Um, regarding timing, the course starts on the end of October, October the 28th this year, and week six ends on the 6th of December and afterwards we have the seventh a week, the a week of the final examination, so that the whole course is, um, is completed, let's say, about a week uh, before the holiday season starts. All right, in the opening, I, um, uh, I mentioned that it's essential that you decide whether or not you take the course, and these, the next slide should explain that in a bit more detail. So this course is for you if you are interested in business processes as a common language between business and IT, if you are interested in the precise meaning of business process models, if you are interested in the formal analysis of process model behavior, and if you are interested in the BPMN as a standard modeling notation for process orchestrations and process choreographies. On the other hand, this course is not for you if you expect to learn how business process management projects can be organized, how I can do project management. We will not cover this in, in our course. 
This course is also not for you if you expect to learn how business processes can be improved from a domain perspective, how to make a process more customer oriented, or how to reduce the runtime of a process. We will not look into these aspects, but we provide the base of the, the common understanding that you will be able to discuss these topics with your partners in your process management projects. This course is also not for you if you expect to learn how processes can be executed in your IT environment, how work for engines work, how processes can be implemented in, for instance, ERP systems. This is also uh, not the topic of this Open HPI course. And finally, this course is not for you if you expect to learn about concrete business processes like the order to cash process. So we invite you to really uh, carefully review if your expectations of the course actually match the content of this course. If this is the case, we are really pleased to have you on board. If this is not the case, you might choose not to register for the course to avoid later disappointment. If you choose to register for the course, uh, we expect you to watch the lecture videos, to do the weekly self-tests and also the homework assignments and to take the final examination. If you achieve at least 50% of the assignments and the exam, you are awarded an Open HPI certificate. And here you see um, a prototype of this um, certificate. So every successful uh, participant will be um, awarded this Open HPI certificate. All right, that's basically what I had to say. Um, this Open HPI team now for this lecture consists of myself as well as Matthias Kunze and Luise Pufal, who are members of my research group here at HPI. Um, yes, that's it. We hope to see you in October when uh, the course starts. Thank you very much for your interest.